Hello, sir. Yeah, good evening. Okay, so we'll start now. Yep. The Rajput welcomes his guest with the Manavar Piala or the Cup of Request, in which they drown all of ancient enmity. Such is the beauty of Rajasthan. Good evening, audience. I am Gorisha Tyagi, and I'll be the moderator for what I'm sure will turn out to be a very culturally enriching session with the director of Mehrangar Museum Trust, Mr. Karni Singh Jasol. Welcome, sir, and thank you for taking the time out to join us for this session. So, thank you for inviting me. So, to begin with, as you are well aware, sir, you were initially educated at the Eton of the East Mayo College, and then went on for a postgraduate degree in museum management and Indian history. culture and ethno archaeology which actually does sound like a lot what i would really like to know is what exactly pulled your interest towards indian history and museum management in particular yeah part of the seeds were uh, uh, shown um, when i was in school and uh, the school um, had their own uh, it's among the very few schools which has got its own museum and i was okay. uh, part of the uh, museum society and uh, but i think the the real uh, nurturing and uh, real interest actually uh, came about when i went to baroda for my graduation and um, i was pursuing history honors there uh, and that's where uh, india's oldest department for art history um, is situated in the fine arts faculty and uh, during my graduation i started uh, uh, interacting with the professors at the museology department uh, and also uh, professors at the art history uh, department and actually came to know for the first time that there is a formal degree in museology and uh, in art history um and then after completing my uh, bachelor's in history honors i uh, took up double masters degree uh, program which included a masters in ancient indian history culture and ethno archaeology the mind with uh, art history and museology okay i don't think i would have ever been able to study so much but uh, as you said before part of the seeds were sown when at at a very young age now all yes. of us are not as lucky to you know have known what what is it that we supposed to pursue so for kids like me and a lot more like me um, like uh, how we uh, grow interest with time right so what can we do as students from different backgrounds and like btech and this and that how can we be of help to dynamic men and women such as yourself in increasing awareness about museums and the sum of cultural importance they hold in our society how can we inculcate ourselves in this yeah it's a um, a culture is a growing sector uh, there is uh, there going to be a lot of investment uh, in culture uh, in india in years to come um, both at the state government level and also at the uh, national uh, level because the government uh, believe um, in sort of advancing cultural identity of the country or of their state uh, which would actually bring a lot of uh, investment into the museum sector so my advice uh, to uh, you know uh college going students uh, who are at the cusp of choosing uh, their uh, career um would be to uh, uh, sort of you know get to know more about the cultural sector uh and it is just not that uh, students with background in art history can participate in the uh, uh, the, the cultural segment you mentioned btech uh, yeah i mean you know technology uh is going to play a major role uh in the museum development uh, that is going to happen in the next 5 years and uh, just i mean the covid period has actually shown that how um the museums who were not abreast with technology um were lagging behind and it was a very important tool uh, for the cultural sector uh in covid times when the museums were closed for nearly a year to use technology to reach out to the wider masses so technology for instance which was never thought to be a very important part of cultural development is actually going to play a very important uh, role um so different disciplines uh, uh i mean art sector is one and culture sector is one which sort of you know intervenes uh, multiple is a multidisciplinary uh, sector and uh, whether it is you know photography if someone is pursuing photography for instance i mean he has a future in arts and culture sector someone who is pursuing painting 
um, or artistry or just fine arts um, would have uh, a role to play. Um, IT sector uh, a, a role to play. So I would I would sort of advise uh, the students to just um, learn a little more about the cultural sector uh, and see uh, where these developments are happening. And if there is a genuine interest in arts uh, and the cultural world, uh, they can align themselves uh, to that. Okay, that sounds like something can be done. Not all hope is lost. Anyway, moving on, as diverse and beautiful as Rajasthan is, and as much as I personally love and admire it, I have never been to Jaisalmer. Even though it's oh. categorized as just as a village, I'm sure there's a lot more to it than, and the history that it holds. What do you think I've missed out on? Well, I mean, it it used to be a sleepy uh, village, you know, with a small uh, population, um, but like all. Uh, rural uh, areas and villages. Um, the villages are uh, uh, changing. Um, it's a it's a old village uh, having a history. It was an area where actually Rathors first moved uh, uh, when they moved from Kannauj uh, to Pali, and from Pali they came to this area near Jaisal, which was called Khet, okay. and established uh, the kingdom there. So it's, it's actually also called the cradle of uh, the Rathors. It is uh, where the Rashford dynasty's early years um, were uh, established. Uh, it has two um, or three major important temples. Uh, one uh, being uh, the Rani Patiani Ji Temple, um, which is a major pilgrims center, and the other is the Jain uh, Tirth uh, Nakoda Ji, uh, which is uh, again the same uh, vicinity. Um, it is also a hub of textile industry. And that is the modern aspect of the village. Uh, predominantly, uh, the dyeing industry uh, is is very active uh, in that area in Balutra and Jaisal. That does actually sound like I missed out on a lot. <laughs> Talking about missing out on, I haven't been fortunate enough as of yet to read your book Peacock in the Desert. Could you give us a little insight into everything that it is about? Well, uh, Peacock in the Desert um, is an exhibition uh, of um, uh, major uh, research, uh, uh, which was in collaboration with the Museum of Fine Arts, Houston, and uh, it's one of the largest uh, exhibition of Indian art, uh, about 300 objects uh, from the Marangar Museum's collection, and also some loans uh, from other uh, private uh, museums. It uh, opened first uh, at the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston, and then uh, it went to the Seattle Art Museum, and then finally to uh, uh, the Royal Ontario Museum in uh, Canada. Um, it uh, uh, predominantly uh, tells the story of uh, Jodhpur, and um, it explores um, uh, certain areas which, uh, which hitherto know were not sort of explored in great length. Uh, for instance. The role of women uh, in the Rajput court, uh, or uh, the Rajput Mughal uh, interaction, and the resultant uh, material culture uh, that uh, resulted, and bringing the story right up to the uh, 20th century, uh, which was the interaction uh, with the British Raj. Okay, so for example, there's this book like Peacock in the Desert. What other books can we refer to for a more in-depth history about Rajasthan? So Rajasthan, um, of course, a lot of lot of books. Uh, I mean, there's um, uh, Rima Huja's uh, book on medieval uh, Rajasthan. Uh, then there's James Todd's uh, uh, sort of you know classic uh, uh, book um, on uh, Rajasthan. Yeah, so I mean, like you know, I mean, there, there there's a whole list. Rajasthan is a sort of a large uh, spectrum, and there are various books which have been written specifically about you know. Jaipur or uh, Udaipur or Bundi art. Um, for Jodhpur, I would say that uh, uh, there's a catalog uh, of the uh, paintings, which is called the Garden and Cosmos. This was another exhibition that was uh, held at the Smithsonian. Um, then uh, we have uh, a catalog of our uh, textile collection uh, done by Rahul Jain. Uh, that catalog is called Darbar, the Royal Textiles of Jodhpur. Um, then uh, there is a book on Marwar painting by Rosemary Krill. 
then there's a book uh, by Robert Elgood on uh, Jodhpur uh, Arms and Armor, and also a new book on uh, the uh, firearm. Uh, then uh, there is a book by Tanjay Singh. It's, it's called The House of Marwar. Yeah. So I mean, like in today's age, I mean, you Google and uh, you'll find uh, all these authors and 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 book books. Yeah. Okay, so coming back to Jisol, as it turned out, you told me a lot about it, and surprisingly enough, I've been studying in Rajasthan from the Rajasthan from the past four years, and I not once did um, Jisol pop up in front of me, and I am crazy for traveling, so, and it, as it turned out, you told me so much more about it, and uh, like such a colorful place, and nobody knows about it as such. Why is that? Like, shouldn't Rajasthan tourism be focusing more towards bringing these areas out and the best in them out? Yeah, I mean, like you know, Barmer in general, uh, the Barmer district in general um, is uh, underdeveloped as far as tourism is concerned. Uh, Jaisalmer, for instance, um, which is a neighboring uh, district, um, uh, has a lot of uh, popular uh, destination. Uh, but uh, Bardmer, for some reason, uh, has not been part of the main uh, tourist uh, circuits. Um, so, I mean, all these places that I mentioned to you about uh, the Rani Pratyaniji Temple or Nakoraji, they are um, you. You get millions of visitors there, uh, and these are not tourists, but they are pilgrim visitors. Here. So, I would say that I mean, it it is serving the purpose because tourism now needs to be seen in a wider spectrum. Um, as just not sort of you know where uh, foreigners go or where uh, popular holiday resorts are, but uh, our religious places are also equally important places um, where the visitation is happening. So that way, uh, both Nakoraji and the uh, Raniji Temple uh, receives um, uh, lakhs of visitors, uh, and they're you know widely known um, among the sort of you know pilgrim. Uh, uh, sector of uh, the visitors, um, but yeah, broadly, I mean, as I said before, that as far as tourism is concerned, uh, the district Bardmer in which the soul and this area is is lagging behind. Okay, with that, uh, jumping right back to the subject of museum preservation, what exactly do you think is the impact of museum on the cultural history preservation? Well, uh, uh, museums are repository of uh, our material culture, and they play a very important role uh, in uh, sort of you know bridging the gap uh, between uh, uh, the material culture and uh, audience. Uh, they play a very important role in preserving our past in form of uh, preservation of uh, objects uh, and also uh, preservation of stories and research. Um, so, in that sense. Uh, uh, museums have a very dynamic role. Uh, unfortunately, in India, uh, it's uh, I would say still a developing uh, sector uh, in that was many the parts of the world. Just about to jump to next. Yeah. I mean, museums are yeah. great, and yes, they preserve stories and everything. But in India, we don't see uh, like the museums aren't as dynamic or you know kinetic as they're supposed to be. If you know what I mean. Yeah, so I mean that's where I mean uh, a greater emphasis and uh, a greater uh, stress uh, has to be put. Uh, like for instance, I was giving an example in elsewhere. Um, going to a museum is part of the school curriculum, and uh, so unless sort of you know we tap uh, the young uh, and their imagination and their creativity. Um, we are not going to be successful. I mean, still museums are considered to be uh, boring uh, places. You tell a kid that you know we are going to a museum, he said, no, no. I mean, like you know, that's the perception they have that you know they are dusty places, and not interesting. So museums uh, have a lot to do in that uh, sector uh, of uh, you know breaking uh, that stereotype uh, and making museums more inter interesting. Uh, more engaging, uh, more relevant uh, yeah. to different uh, segments uh, of the society, and, and and this role has to be played both by museum and by the government. So the, the school curriculum part, for instance, if it is not 
done formally uh, by the government, uh, then um, you know it's it's a sort of a, quite a uphill task just for museum to break uh, that wall and sort of reach out to the to the kids. Uh, they'll s still remain uh, a distant place. So uh, museums have to be uh, brought into mainstream. Uh, they have to become more relevant. Uh, and in age of technology, uh, they have wider scope of uh, reaching out to a wider uh, audience and making themselves more interesting, engaging, um, and exciting. Unless you make museums exciting place to visit, uh, it'll be very difficult for museums to sustain in the future. Yes, and how can they be made exciting? I mean, what uh, fifth grader or sixth grader would have any interest in going to a museum? Because yeah, it's it's a uh, it's not a rocket science. Uh, you need a uh, you know professional uh, group of people who are passionate uh, to bringing uh, museums uh, closer uh, to public. And I'll give you one small example. Um, uh, sometime back before COVID. We had approached a school, a neighborhood school just outside of the fort uh, to send their kids. And it was a government school. And they said, uh, I mean, you know, what is the use of these kids uh, coming into a museum? Um, and we said, you know, I mean, you, you can teach mathematics. Uh, and they were intrigued. The teachers were intrigued. You know, uh, you know how would uh, they teach uh, mathematics in a museum? Uh, this thing. I said, well, you bring a class and we'll show you how. And there was a small uh, uh, class of uh, grade five or six, uh, they came. Uh, you know, they were given uh, measuring tapes uh, in a courtyard, uh, and they were asked to measure the courtyard. Uh, and they practically knew, you know, what is the length, what is the width, and through that, uh, they also engaged with a historic site or learning geometry uh, 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 through the, you know, the, uh, the the patterns that you see in architecture. So, I mean, there are 110 ways in which uh, uh, different uh, creative approaches to bringing uh, kids into your world and making their imagination grow and ma making them think beyond the classroom uh, would not only be beneficial for our education system, but also for the Indian museum movement. Okay, so moving, coming back to Mehrangar, it literally being one of the largest forts in India with a very vast history. Could you please give us a short tour through some key, some of the key architectural features of Mehrangar? Well, uh, Mehrangar, uh, as you know, is a 15th century fort um, uh, built over a long period of time. It was built by Rav Joda, after whom the city is named uh, Jodhpur. Though it's mm. a single mass of fortification, uh, uh, but it, it's built over a long period of time. So it doesn't have any particular architectural style, uh, but it's ever evolving uh, space. Uh, so, I mean, as a building, it has three important functions. Uh, it was primarily built as a defensive architecture. And uh, the second important function uh, is that it was a residential space. So it was the residence of the royal family. So though you have massive... Uh, uh, protective walls and bastions, but within, uh, within them you have beautiful palaces, and these palaces were where the king uh, uh, lived. And the third important function of the building was uh, that uh, it was the seat of power. So it is from here that the king is administering his large kingdom. So architecture and its uh, special uh, spatial layout should be understood within these three important functions of a building. So it has fortified uh, massive walls. It has delicate uh, palaces and it has spaces that were used for administrative uh, purposes. Um, mm. and, and, and that sort of defines uh, in many ways. I think we lost the connection for a bit. Yeah, but um, I can hear you. Okay. So, moving on to the last question of our session today, being the director of Mehrangar Museum Trust, what are some of the key professional challenges you face on a day-to-day -day basis, and how do you work your way through them? I, I mean, you know, for me, um, it's a you know an area of uh, 
great interest uh, and passion so i i don't take anything uh, as a challenge or a pressure um and uh, what we strive for is um, uh, a great a visitor experience i mean that is our bottom line uh, of you know what we do so right from the time that the visitor um sort of uh, alights from his car uh, to buying a ticket uh, to moving in a gallery or eating in one of our cafeterias or buying something from a museum shop uh, what we all strive as a team is that the visitor gets a fantastic visitor experience and so one of i mean the the, the challenge is that 365 days with million plus visitors uh, you maintain that standard you don't let that standard go down so that is one of the uh, sort of you know a challenge that the team uh, 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 sort of you know counter um, at a regular period and and we strive for that and we don't we don't take it as pressure but as as a opportunity to you know giving a great visitor experience to people who are visiting uh, jodhpur Well this has actually turned out to be a very knowledgeable session i'm sure all of us present over here gained brilliant insights about rajasthan jaisal and as i would like to call it the art of museum management with that i would like to thank the esteemed mr karni singh jaisal once again for being a part of this live session and enlightening our minds with such rich knowledge thank you sir thank and you, i hope we get the chance to see you again very soon thank you thank you for having me yeah thank you sir